Uh, sir, if I can have you say and spell your name for me. Sergeant Jack, J-A-C-K, Hackett, H-A-C-K-E-T-T. -T. And your title? Lead Scout, 9th and 10th Cavalry. Great. Tell me about the Buffalo Soldiers here at Fort Garland. Buffalo Soldiers arrived here in Fort Garland, spent about eight, th I'm sorry, spent about three years here. But we were here on guard duty and we came down here primarily to help settle the problem with the Ute Indian. Where the Buffalo Soldier got their name is when the Indian saw you, they gave you your name based upon what they saw around them. And when the Indian first saw me, they saw the color of the skin. And when I had it, they saw a nappy hair. And they saw a thick coat of beard. And I looked to them like a buffalo. So I got the name Buffalo Soldier. But as a member of that 9th and 10th Calvary, that name Buffalo Soldier became a name of honor and distinction in every war that my country has been in. From the Civil War to the Revolutionary War, people that look like me have fought for this country. And we continue to fight. Buffalo soldiers are important. And one bit of information that you might not know, there was one female Buffalo soldier. Her name was Kathy Williams. She was a cook in the Union Army. That Civil War ended. She didn't want to go back to slavery. It wasn't a place left for her to go. So what she did, she changed her name from Kathy Williams to William Kathy. And in order to get into the army in those days, you, they didn't check your teeth. They didn't ask you if you knew much. They wanted to know, could you ride? Could you shoot? Could you follow the Big Dipper? Could you look at that sky and know where you were? So she did that. She cut her hair real close got her a raggedy uniform. And for two years, she was a Buffalo soldier. She got sick one day, had to go see the doctor, and her secret came out. And from what we know about her, they gave her a disability, dishonorable discharge, and didn't pay her for her service. I am a Buffalo soldier. I wouldn't want to be anything else. Thank you. What uh, was life like for Buffalo soldiers here on the, on the, in the forts with the, the white soldiers, the cavalry? Well, when, the, when they first saw us, there were no flags flying. There were no bugles bugling. Some people, when they saw us, they spit on the ground. They didn't want any niggas serving with them. Didn't like us until the time came for us to fight alongside of them. So the discrimination, the pain, the suffering of the Buffalo Soldier was something that they had to endure, and we did. And we became famous, and we became popular, and we helped save this country. Coming from slavery, a slave naturally sings his feelings. And sometimes when we would ride into this fort and we had lost one of us, two of us, we would sing something like this. It would be a sad song. There's a man going around taking names. There's a man go around taking names. But he took my best friend's name. Left my soul in pain. There's a man going around. He's taking names. And when we rode in, and we were glorious in battle, the song might be something like this. 
Don't you let nobody turn you around, turn you around, turn you around. Don't you let nobody turn you around from the straight and the narrow way. And that straight and the narrow way was being a soldier and being in this environment. Now, sometimes some of the Buffalo soldiers come from the deep south, and they were used to heat and rain and humidity, but they weren't used to something that falls from that sky called snow. So there was a great change in learning how to deal with the environments here as well as with the people here. But I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. And one of the ways the Buffalo Soldier rose up was through what we call education. Learning to read and write made the difference in the life of the Buffalo Soldier as they made their way through this West. And looking back on it, I don't think I would have changed a thing. What, uh, you must have known there was going to be this discrimination coming in. What compels the Buffalo soldiers to want to serve and to fight with, not, not side with the, the native, for one thing, just to fight with the Americans, the whites, and, and just what compels them to, to, to suffer through all that prejudice and all that. Well, sir, after that thing was over that people called the Civil War, and I need to tell you, there ain't no war that's civil. When it was done, I got an offer to stay where I was, or the government made an offer that if you join up, we're going to create the 9th and 10th Cavalry, and we're going to send you west. And the reason I came was I couldn't stay where I was. It was just not safe for me. Things really didn't change after that piece of paper was signed. So it was a desire to serve my country, to do the best I could for the little bit of money that they paid me. So I had a choice of staying in the past or moving into the future. And so that's what I decided to do. And so the idea of people not liking me, well, I learned that what defines a man is what's in his heart, it's what's in his head, and how he speaks. And I carried all of those. So I wanted to serve I wanted to let people know that people that were my color could make a difference. And we're doing that today, still. Because in all of the wars that have been fought, there's been people that have said, we're going to call ourselves the Buffalo Soldiers. And I'm proud of that. So the Buffalo Soldiers still lives today in the West, North, South, Buffalo Soldier still lives. The fighting between not just the African American, but anybody in the Calvary, it was, it was unusual. It was very unusual. You could see someone that you, uh, an Indian brave, whoever it was, that you looked eye to eye and something said, you know, wow, aren't you sick of this? Aren't you sick of the killing and the dying? And the other thing about the Buffalo Soldier, there was something that went through the Buffalo Soldier that said, I, and this is where the depression came in, I have to kill these people in order to prove that I'm worth not killing. And that takes, that takes something in, in mentally. I gotta continue to kill to prove that I'm worth not killing. And the, the Buffalo Soldier really felt that because they knew, gee, you know, the only way that I'm going to make it here is to kill. And the more I do that, the more I'm going to be allowed to live. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to take the land from somebody. I don't have any land. I'm here to take their land, knowing that if I take it, if I ride in to see some settlers, 
and to bring them in, a lot of times is don't get off that horse. I'm here to save you, but you're angry because you see this. So it was that, that craziness that went on, that craziness that goes on in human beings when we think the hate after a while is just, it doesn't make sense. 